Extract from an ancient Nyingma scripture, dated 810 A.D. It is said that the being whom Guru Rinpoche, the lotus-born second Buddha, met on his way to the court of King Dresden, stood taller than most men and possessed three times their strength and speed. It is also said that though he looked like a man and spoke like a man, it was clear to Rinpoche that the stranger was a creature of divine lineage. Of the many tales the stranger recounted to the great master in the time they spent in each other's company, one stood out the most. The story was of a woman born over four millennia past, who lived for almost half as many years. She was said to have been the greatest warrior ever born and possessed of extraordinary battle skills that saw her conquer entire armies over the centuries of her existence. Her forefathers were descended from the loins of the very first humans who walked the earth, and her bloodline was made doubly unique by an unknown event that granted her kin powers beyond the natural realm, including the gift of immortality. One day, sickened by the increasing savagery with which her clan ruled over the race of man, she rose to defend the weak and the just and all those who suffered needlessly at the hands of the bloodthirsty tyrants who had given birth to her kind. It was at that time the warrior forged the very first three-spear weapon upon which the Trishula would eventually be based. The war that followed lasted 100 days and nights and turned the sky dark with ash and the land crimson with blood. On the last day of the fearsome battle, the warrior defeated the original immortals. According to the stranger, the descendants of this mighty warrior still walk the earth and would do so until the end of days, for her bloodline had a destiny to fulfill, one that had been forged in a higher realm long before all this ever was. The stranger also foretold that a time would come when the warrior's soul would be reborn within the immortal bloodlines, when her skills and valor would be needed the most. The body in which she would reincarnate would be marked with the symbol of her three-spear weapon. When the great master asked the stranger how he knew this, the immortal smiled and said, Because I am of the fifth generation born from her bloodline. In the decades that followed Guru Rinpoche's encounter with the descendant of the warrior, the great master crossed paths with other immortals. He came to believe not only that they stemmed from original divine beings, but also that their existence should be concealed from humankind until such a time that man could accept the reality of their existence without fear. He thus created a set of monks, whom he tasked with guarding the secret reality of the Croviers and the Bastions, the two immortal races, and to whom he bequeathed this scripture, the most secret of all his writings. In honor of the immortal warrior whose tale resonated so strongly with him, Rinpoche named his sect the Order of the Three Spears and had them bear a Trashula tattoo on their right palm. He also pledged that when the warrior's soul reincarnated, his men would lay down their lives for that immortal. October 2010 Temple of the Order of the Three Spears Eastern Himalayas Tibet. Abbot Kelsang strolled down the winding stone steps to the shallow terrace fifty feet below, where a figure sat in silent meditation. Mist clung to the trees covering the flanks of the wooded ravine and swirled in ever-changing shapes in the cool currents generated by the fast-flowing river at the bottom of the narrow valley. Jagged stone pillars rose through the shifting white blanket, Silent soldiers that had borne witness to the passage of time for eons. The water rushed around the bases of the giant rock formations, streams dividing and merging in an energetic dance before tumbling down the waterfalls to the west of the gorge. The river was the lifeline of the temple perched high against the cliffside, supplying not only plentiful catches of fish and the water needed to sustain it, but also hydroelectric power to the complex of caves beneath the buildings and the carefully camouflaged satellite dish in the forest at the summit of the valley. Abbot Kelsing paused at the bottom of the stairs that had been carved into the rock face hundreds of years before his birth. A smile curved his lips. A sparrow dozed on the shoulder of the saffron-robed monk sitting on the edge of the cliff. Another one landed on his bald head, pecked his scalp curiously, 
and flew off into the mist.